Good morning, students. Students, I am your assistant teacher, Mr. Anil Kumar Swain. Welcome you back to the Gyanjyoti online classes. Students, today we'll uh, go through the section geography and we'll study a new chapter. That is chapter number eight. Students, this is the last chapter of your section geography. Before this, there is a chapter I will teach you uh, further. That is tomorrow. And the name of the chapter is students. Climate and natural vegetation. Chapter number is eight, and the name of the chapter is climate and natural vegetation. Friends, what do you mean by climate? That I will uh, tell you. So before that, let us uh, uh, study about the introduction. That students very often we read in newspaper, watch on TV, or hear people talking about weather and climate. Yes, often in a in a classroom, in a generally people talk about weather and climate. But do they really know what is the difference between? Weather and climate, they, they are related to the uh, geographical aspects. So there is a technical terms of geography, but are they same or are they different? That we'll study here. Climate plays a very vital role in shaping the economy and environmental diversity of a country. So it is important to understand the complex character of climate, which influences the people. Their lifestyle, economy, and culture. Students, what happened here? The state of the atmosphere at a place at a given time is called weather. Students, what is weather? The the state of the atmosphere. The state of the atmosphere at a place at a given time is called weather. When we say it is hot or cold, sunny or cloudy, windy or calm, and so on, we are actually talking about weather. So the average weather of a particular area over a larger period, over a longer period of time, is called the climate. Students, what the average weather? This, this was the definition of weather. The next definition about climate is. The average, the average weather of a particular area the average weather of a particular area over a longer period of time is called climate students the state of the atmosphere at a place at a given time is called weather but the average weather of a particular area over a longer period of time is called climate. So, students, how the climate is? We'll study the name of the topic is students climate. So, we'll study about the climate, how it is affects. Oh, the climate of a place is determined mainly by altitude, means the height, the latitude, the position with respect to the mountains, distance from the sea, and by the winds also. Students, almost all these factors contribute to the climate of India as a whole and are responsible for the climate variations from place to place. Students, India is a huge country with amazing variety of climate and natural vegetation. It ranges from cold Himalayan region to hot dry sand deserts and tropical northern plain. 
While the people of Ladakh severe in sub zero temperatures, it is extremely hot in the dry region of Gujarat and Rajasthan. Students, uh, in India also, in India, you know, students, India is a very big country, so the climate or the weather it differs from place to place. In, if in Kashmir, in the, during the uh, winter season also, the people sever with cold, but when it comes to Gujarat and Rajasthan, it is extremely hot region. Students, broadly the major seasons in India is divided into four. So what are they? We study about the different seasons of our country. The first one is students. Major seasons in our country. Cold weather season, the first one is the cold weather season, uh, that is the winter season, that is the winter season from December to February. Cold weather season is the winter season from December to February, then hot weather season. Students, the hot weather seasons is uh, also known as the summer season. The summer season from March to May. Students, the third one is the southwest monsoon season. The southwest monsoon season, this is the rainy season. So it continues from the June, from the month of June to September. I have written the names in short words. You, I hope you, would have, you are understanding all this. Then the last one is the winter dream. Monsoon season. The winter dream monsoon season that is from October to now. Students, so now we will study them in detail. Students, just have a look at the board. Cold weather season, that is the winter season, starts from December to February. Hot weather season is the summer season, student, it starts from March to May. The southwest monsoon season, that is June to September, that is uh, obviously known as rainy season, then the last one is the retreating monsoon season. So the first one we study is the winter season. India lies in the northern hemisphere. Students, we know India lies in the northern hemisphere. It is winter in India when it is sun shines directly on the Tropic of Capricorn. The winter months in India are students December, January, February. From the November itself, we can see students uh, the feeling of cold we can um, feel or we can experience. But the major seasons of winter are December, January, and February. So, students, winters in India are very dry. Not very dry, they are dry, and the northwest, northeast trade winds blow from the land to the sea, giving us no rains. However, students, the northwestern India, such as Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Haryana, and Delhi, receives rain due to western disturbances. While the Coromandel coast gets rain due to northeast monsoon. Students, as we know that the Tropic of Cancer passes through India. Students, we know the Tropic of Cancer passes through India. The northern part of India lies in the subtropical region. 
the sun's rays fall slantingly giving us less heat in winters the northern part of india receives cold winds from the himalayas bringing down the temperatures to about 0 degrees in the plains so in the southern part of india is not cold as due to its nearness to the sea and equator so it is not cold then students the next is the summer season the summer season the summers in india are very hot the sun shines directly on the tropic of cancer and the southern part of india receives direct rays from the sun from the march onwards as the result summer begins in india at the end of the march that is the uh, we can say the starting season of the summer season as the year advances summer also advances to the north so that may and june are the hottest months in the north when the temperature rises to about 45 degree celsius or more than 45 degree celsius hot local winds called lu blow at the time in the northern plains and the schools are closed for summer vacations temperatures are high in the whole country except the himalayan region or the mountainous region of the uh, countries and in the especially in the deccan and south where there are famous hill stations like the uti kodaikanal Kunur, Kurg, Vainar. Okay, there are the famous hill stations of South India. Students, next is the rainy season, southwest monsoon. Already. Southwest monsoon or rainy season. Monsoon is the only common feature of the otherwise varied climate of India. The word monsoon comes from the Arabic word mousi. Monsoon comes from the Arabic word mousi. Friends, it means season. This is the Arabic word. It means uh, season. Students, then the monsoon winds blow from Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal towards the land. They carry moisture with them, and when this wind strikes, the mountain rainfall occurs. Students, in this season, now also we are experiencing, is the month of August, we are experiencing rainy season, but some parts receive good rainfall, some parts will less, and some parts uh, they suffer from drought or famine due to very low rainfall or no rainfall. Just as the summer is first experienced in the south, monsoon also begins from breakovers or breaks over from Kerala first and within weeks in advance it advances to the northern India. So it starts from Kerala. A monsoon arrives in the south at the beginning of June and continues till September. Almost all the country receives most of all its rain during this time. So it's, next is uh, the retreating monsoon means the return the retreating monsoon or uh, that is the a reversal of monsoon means the return of monsoon. This season is marked by complete reversal of wind movements as compared to the monsoon season. Winds move from land to land to sea. These are dry winds, but they pick up as moisture from the Bay of Bengal and it rains in the south, particularly Tamil Nadu, Telangana, and Andhra Pradesh. Students, it is the reversal of monsoons. Uh, when the monsoons uh, go reverse then rainfall is uh, experienced in Tamil Nadu, Telangana and 
Andhra Pradesh. So students, this was the primary topic all about. Now we will study about the natural vegetation. This topic. Students, now the second part of the topic that is natural vegetation. We will study it in detail. So students, what is natural vegetation? The vegetation cover of a place anywhere in the world is a mirror of its climate. Students, the vegetation itself will explain you, will show you a mirror that what type of climate is that country facing. What is the weather around its region, surrounding its region. Students, besides climate, relief of the land also influences the vegetation cover. Relief means students, the water bodies, the climate, the weather, the situation, the location. So, that is called the relief features. As, is, as such as the vegetation varies with climate and relief, natural vegetation refers to the natural growth of plants without any interference or intervention from human activities. Since India has students, we know that India is a vast country. So the area, the place, the people, the culture, everything differs from place to place. So India had varied climate with and relief features. There are amazing varieties in its natural vegetation. Ranging from evergreen forests in the east to thorny bushes of Rajasthan in the west. Therefore, the following major types of natural vegetation are found in India. So, students, vegetations are many types. We can see many types in India. So, first, first of all, let me write the number. How many vegetations can be seen? The first one is students, evergreen forests. Students, the first one is the evergreen forest. The second is tropical deciduous. Or monsoon forest. The third one is students, the mountain vegetation. These are the subtopic students which will study in few minutes. Semi arid vegetation. Evergreen forest, tropical deciduous forest or the monsoon forest, mountain vegetation, semi arid vegetation, then swampy vegetation. Swampy vegetation. So, these are the subtopic students. Apart from this, we will study about the wildlife of our country, but before this, so we will study one by one in detail and the first one is students, the evergreen forest. Students, these are called evergreen forest because what is the reason? Because they do not shed their leaves. At the same time, they appear green all the time. Students, what do you mean by evergreen? Means uh, looking green all the time. Then, students, the northeastern, the northeastern region, Western Ghats and the Andaman. Students, as I have told you that these forests are called evergreen forest because they do not shed their leaves. Students and these particular areas, the northeastern region, the northeastern states of our country, the western Ghats, 
Andaman and Goa Islands, they all are covered with evergreen forest. Students, here the vegetation is of three layers. They uh, covered with three layers. The top layer forms a canopy under the sky. The commonly found trees are betel nut. Students, you know what is betel nut? Then mahogany, rosewood, etc., etc. Many kinds of orchids grow on the branches of these trees in this forest. Students, the next is the monsoon forest. We will study about the monsoon forest. It is also known as the tropical deciduous of the monsoon forest. Students, few minutes ago I have told you about the meaning of the word monsoon. It means mausim. It means season. It is an Arabic word. It is taken from the Arabic language. So these are forests found over most of India and are also called the monsoon forests. Monsoon forests are found in parts of Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Bihar, Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. Most of the parts and on the Shivali hills from Jammu in the west to the West Bengal in the east. Students, I have told you now many states, name of the many states means most of the states in our country they have monsoon forest or the tropical deciduous forest. The principal trees of this forest are students, teak, tar, sandalwood, mahua, khair, Mawa, then care, then mango, jackfruit, water and bamboo, sesame, arjun and banyan. So these are some of the trees, etc. etc. Students, economically they are more important than evergreen forest because these trees are used for commercial purposes also and uh, this are fruit trees which are uh, usually eaten by all of all the population of our country so these are more important than the evergreen forest students then we will move to the mountainous region or the mountainous vegetation that how the vegetation looks like in the mountainous areas of our country In the Himalayas, climate and vegetation change with changing altitude. Altitude means friends, height, ranging from high temperatures and tropical monsoon forests in the foothills of to the above the tundra region above the snow line. So the natural vegetation also changes with altitude. It's true, friends. The trees, the vegetation which we see in our plain areas, that is not similar to the mountainous area. Students. Uh, in this uh, type of vegetation, uh, we can see the coniferous forest in the western end. Coniferous forest. Coniferous forest are found in the western and central Himalayas and the Khasi, Naga, and Manipur hills. Predominantly, cheer, oak, then and pine grow in this area. Students, uh, in this coniferous forest, the needle like shape uh, leaves they can be seen in the cheer, oak, and pine in the uh, trees. In the higher mountain slopes of the Himalaya, sudden altitude of 4000 to 5200 meters. Students, in the high altitude, uh, lush green grass come up in late spring. Students, less green grass can be seen in a higher altitude from 4000 to 5200 meter. Apart from this various species, students, uh, sorry, so let me complete it that the pine and the oak and this type of trees can be found. The less green grasses can be seen. So that is called the alpine grass. And apart from these students, 
the different types of uh, varieties of uh, grasses can be seen that is the juniper ronan drone straws and mosses this zone of grass lies above the coniferous belt and just below the snow line therefore students this type of forest or this type of trees can be seen only in the mountainous region students next is the semi arid region or the region of the near the desert semi arid vegetation the region east of the desert covering punjab haryana and delhi and up to kachhawar in gujarat has short coarse grasses means coarse means students mota coarse grasses scrubs and bushes bushes acacia is the most commonly growing all over delhi and haryana acacia is a coarse grass mostly found in uh, delhi and haryana students after this swampy vegetation swampy vegetation it is spread over a vast swampy delta of the ganga and brahmaputra students then there are mangrove forest swamps and forest islands in a network of canals and streams in the sundarbans area students sundarbans is a delta and the vegetation uh, we can see in sundarbans is the whistling pines mangroves then dates palms etc etc the sundarban region has got its name from the sundari trees students here we can see the sundari trees from which the sundarban delta has got its got its what is name from sundar sundar trees the name of the delta has been given and it is grows in abundance sundar trees grows in abundance therefore sundarbans delta is named students now after uh, completing the climate natural vegetation then we will move to what's wildlife that what type of wildlife we can see in our forest students the forest of the northeast have the largest number of rhinoceros in india besides there also the natural it is uh, the natural habitat of the elephants langurs and the monkeys especially the northeast region of our country apart from elephants the other animals to be seen in this rainforest of kerala are wild pigs sambars barking deer mouse deer and uh, indian wild dogs and very rarely tigers they can see in the rainforest of kerala but the sundarban friends as i have told you the they are the sundarban is home to the tigers spotted deer pigs rhesus monkeys and crocodiles deer and peacocks are found in all types of natural vegetation regions in india friends deer and peacocks are such animals they are found in all types of natural vegetation regions of our country students then we will move to the next that is in the lower reaches of the tropical deciduous forest in the himalayan foothills one can find elephants goat antelopes the langurs monkeys tigers as well as their prey like the deer and wild boars and some animals like the wild dogs jackals sloth bears also shows leopards musk deer and himalayan black and brown bears are seen in the higher hills among coniferous forest shows coniferous forest can be seen in the mountainous region so in that region especially leopards musk deer himalayan black and brown bears are seen next students we uh, have a look about the tropical deciduous forest that is in central india are a natural habitat for langurs mongoose hyenas varieties of deer the bara singha the chital or spotted deer 
nilgai as well as majestic indian basin bison and wild pig students the tropical deciduous forest students is the langur monkeys mango then mangoes hyenas and varieties of deer so what are the different varieties of deer that is called the bara singa chital चितल द बारा सिंगा नील गाय दीज आर सम ऑफ द एनिमल्स कैन बी सीन इन द कनिफरस फॉरेस्ट इज सॉरी द ट्रॉपिकल डेसिडियस फॉरेस्ट नॉट कनिफरस द ट्रॉपिकल डेसिडियस फॉरेस्ट रीजन दीज टाइप ऑफ एनिमल्स कैन बी सीन टुडे स्टूडेंट्स लायंस आर फाउंड ओनली इन द गिल वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी नाउ इट इज द लायंस पॉपुलेशन इन आवर कंट्रीज Uh, disappearing and therefore it is found only in the gir wildlife sanctuary situated in gujarat there was a time when lions could be found all across haryana punjab rajasthan the fall in the number of lions is a result of extensive poaching and depletion of habitat students poaching means hunting then students well uh, study about the conservation of why there is a need for the conservation of uh, wildlife so need for the conservation students why there is a need there is a need for conserve our natural resources the growth of population leads to an increase in the demand for food which means more land in the demand uh, is required for cultivation trees in the forest are cut down to make way for more land for farms and buildings animals are decreasing in number due to widespread poaching hunting and depletion of their natural habitat many species are getting extinct on the verge of extinction so students there is a need to conserve forest and wildlife also students then next this is small topic given in your book that is the why should we conserve natural resources now we studied about the need for conservation now we study about the natural resources students it is important to conserve our natural resources on which we depend thoroughly trees are the life line of society excessive fill felling of trees cutting of trees can lead to various problems like floods drought climate change lack of resources and wildlife extinction therefore for sustainable development that is development that fulfills the need of present generation without compromising the need of future generation it is important to save forest for experts there is a small term called sustainable development what is sustainable development students it means development that fulfills the need fulfills the development that fulfills the need or present generation development that fulfills the need or present generation without without compromising without compromising the need of the future 
generation. That is called the feeling of sustainable development. Development that fulfills the need of present generation without compromising the need of future generations. Friends, this is uh, the meaning of sustainable development. Then, friends, conserving wildlife in India. Friends, how wildlife uh, is being conserved and what are the different ways that we will study here further. Students, how wildlife is conserved. We will study that in order to conserve our natural resources, the government of India has declared many forests as wildlife sanctuaries and uh, national parks also. Some national parks and biosphere reserves have also been set up in India. As I have told you, wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserves, national parks, bird sanctuary also, also are situated in our country also. And in India, there are now almost 537 districts. 537 wildlife centuries are there and 103 national parks 537 wildlife centuries 103 national parks are there in our country. In these centuries and national parks, poaching is illegal and cutting of trees is not allowed. The Indian government has established 18 biosphere reserves. Eighteen biosphere reserves. I am reserves in our country which protect an area larger than a national park or century. A biosphere reserve often include one or more national parks. They help in protecting not only the wildlife and natural resources of the region but also the human communities that inhabit in this region inside that biosphere reserve. So then the government of India also introduced or started the tiger project or the project elephant to protect these animals from extinction. Every year Wildlife Week is celebrated in the first week of October by the government of India and environmentalists, the people related to environment, to create awareness about wildlife conservation among people in our country. Students, we too can contribute to conserve wildlife. We can refuse or buy articles made from animal body parts such as their bones, skins, furs, horns and feathers. The Bisnois of Jodhpur students we have I heard the name the Bisnois of Jodhpur have been associated with wildlife production. They have been fiercely fighting for the environment for more than 200 years. The black bear is famous in the um, state of Rajasthan. Students, as I have told you that 537 wildlife centuries, 103 national parks and 18 biosphere reserves are set up in our country just to preserve wildlife and natural resources and so some of the wildlife uh, centuries in our uh, country I am writing some examples uh, the first one I can say that Priya wildlife century situated in Kerala students then uh, some uh, this is the wildlife century Then students, our national parks, uh, first of all Kajaranga National Park, situated in Assam. One more example of national park can be the Sundarbans. Sundarbans is situated 
field in West Bengal. This is just uh, two examples of National Park. Then what about? I will write here about the Bioscar Reserve, the Nilgiri Bioscar Reserve. and the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve is spread across Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Karnataka. And Karnataka. So students, and one more example I can write is the Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve number 5. Another way is also type of biosphere reserve in Uttarakhand. Students, so these are some of the examples, but in your book, uh, many examples have been given, like uh, if you will come to World of Centuries. First of all, there is Sultanpur Bird Century in Haryana. Feria, what I have written here. Sanjay Gandhi Wildlife Century in Maharashtra. Sambhar Wildlife Century in Rajasthan. Hashinapur Wildlife Century in Uttar Pradesh. If you will come to national parks, Bandavgarh National Park in Madhya Pradesh, Kirdeo National Park in Rajasthan, Bolpakam National Park in Meghalaya. And if you will come to the Biosphere Reserve, then Nokrek Biosphere Reserve in Meghalaya, Dehang Debang Biosphere Reserve in Arunachal Pradesh, Gulf of Mannar uh, Biosphere Reserve in Tamil Nadu, Sundarbans in West Bengal. So students, these are some of the examples of biosphere reserves, national parks and wildlife centuries. You can search in net also and you can know all details about all the biosphere reserves and national parks. So students, this was the chapter all about. Chapter number 8, I have completed climate and natural vegetation. Tomorrow we will complete the next chapter, that is chapter number 7. So students, for today, I say goodbye to all of you students. Thank you students, thank you for watching the video. Thank you, have a nice day, bye bye. Thank you, students.